The former New Zealand Rugby CEO, also former Welsh Rugby CEO, Sport England CEO. So he carries a suitcase of credibility alongside. David Moffat joins us again. Welcome back, David. Uh, yeah, thanks, Martin. Looking forward to it. Well, I'm looking forward to it too. And what I mean by that is a, a tumultuous week for New Zealand rugby. And I'm looking forward to it because we have had Mark Robinson so inept and ineffectual as a CEO. He has painted himself into this corner and now he's got to try and somehow extricate himself from it. How does he do that? Um, well, I'm not quite sure how he does that, to be perfectly honest with you. It, it's all of his own making. Um and quite frankly, it's embarrassing and uh, and incompetent, and I and I don't see how how he can get out of this. I mean, the board may very well uh, say, well, don't worry about it. all of this uh, noise. We'll we'll keep you on. I expect them to do that, um, and then he will just blithely go on making mistake after mistake and. Um, we don't have the time today to discuss, perhaps we can another day, you know, the, the litany of um, decisions that he's made that have not done New Zealand rugby any favours at all. But uh, on this one, I, I, do, I frankly don't know how he gets out of it. David, so as as a CEO and the experience that you've got, what is it that flabbergasts you the most here? Is it his inability or refusal to actually make a decision? Is it the fact that he has just surrounded himself with yes men and with PR fluffers and tries to distance himself from it? Or is it the fact that he won't actually do what his job is, which is either to stand beside Ian Foster or shoot him in the head? He's got two options and it just doesn't seem he wants to do either. Sack him or back him. And uh, as you say, anything but actually making a decision, which I think is the hallmark of the way in which he operates. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, it's not very good. But then again, he hasn't had much experience as a chief executive. He was with Taranaki for a while. But outside of that, he doesn't have any experience. And, and he's running, um, arguably, the company with the highest profile in New, Ze uh, in New Zealand. Uh, including at times a higher profile than the government and and a company which is turning over a hundred million dollars a year and he more. doesn't have the and more and he doesn't have the experience to be able to do that effectively uh, and it's a, and it's a shame you know he uh, the board but the board the board put him in place and they have to wear it but this board um, will never admit to making a mistake never, never. whether it's a, no and, and whether it's over this whole Foster saga or whether it's over the backflip on um, the uh, Silver Lake deal, whether it's a backflip on the deal with Australians in Super Rugby, and, and, and the list goes on and on, but they will never admit to making a mistake. And that is one of the biggest failings of any organisation is to actually say, well, we're always right. Uh, and um, the public uh, can suck it up. And the public are the fans. And that's where he's let the fans down. I'm a fan. You know, you're a fan. We don't know what's going on. And every time this guy, I mean, I saw a little bit of this, um, this presser that he did in South Africa. I mean, it was... It was appalling. farcical, mate. It was farcical, wasn't it? Even the way he looked, the way he turned up at that time in the morning. David, before we go on, David Moffat is with us. What do you say to people, because you and me both agree on this, and we're both very strong advocates for the fact that he's not the right guy. I think, and, look, and, I, and no disrespect to him, but I think because he's got a piece of paper next to his name, Mark Robinson, that's his post-grad from Cambridge, that, that just wowed out all the people at New Zealand Rugby, and he kind of got rubber-stamped into the job without the proper selectorial process. And you could accuse uh, the, the rugby union of doing the same with Ian Foster. But my question being is, what do you say to people who say, oh, look, you are just becoming a mouthpiece and a renter quote for the anti-brigade, David. Everyone comes to you. I'm coming to you today because you're going to say things about Mark Robinson that no one else is prepared to say. What would you say to that? Well, um, I think people come to me because there's a void, uh, because Mark Robinson allows that void to exist because he is controlled by some incompetent PR people, in my view. If, if he was doing his job properly, they wouldn't need to come to me for a comment because he would have it all out there. He would front the media in presses and answer questions about anything, not as we've seen recently where he selects a couple of journos and gives them an exclusive either off the record or, you know, one-on-one. -on -one.
Look, can I tell you, you can I just interrupt you there? I know for a fact that he approached uh, NZME and News Talk ZB and asked for Jason Pine to do that interview with him because he knew what kind of interview it would be. That, to me, is a guy that is really not in touch with what his job should be. And so he loses the respect of the media when you do that. Once you show, show favoritism to anybody in the media, then the rest of the media will just say, okay, uh, we'll just put that one in our back pocket. Um, and and the, the, the thing I found about the media, Martin, from the very beginning was you either enjoy dealing with the media or you don't. I enjoyed, always enjoyed dealing with the media. And, and, and the media in New Zealand and Wales never gave me an easy ride, but I'd always front up. Uh, and so that, I think... I think when I was going to allude to the issue with the fans, the fans pay his wages, whether yes. it's because they subscribe to television or whether they buy or Max tickets, tickets to the games yeah. or <clears throat> merchandising or whatever, they pay his wages. And there are all the fans in New Zealand, let alone around the world, are sort of looking at this saying, well, what's going on? Why won't you tell me? Why won't you front up? We, we are the people that you should be talking to. And, and he disses the fans, you know, and, and it's just not good enough. I agree with you. The other thing, David Moffat is with us on the platform, uh, is, that, is that he is also, he's trying very hard to distance him himself uh, from Ian Foster and also even the decision that was made. He's rewriting history here. Let us not forget that a panel was appointed, led by Sir Graham Henry, to appoint the next All Black coach. Mark Robinson was on that. So yeah, the board might have to ratify the decision, but you know the reality of it is, is that once that decision was made and Sir Graham was involved, no one else on the panel was going to disagree with him in that room at that time. And the board were never going to overturn that decision. Mark Robinson's fingers and his fingerprints and his hands are all over this. Absolutely they are. And the one thing that a chief executive should never do is hide behind his board. They, he, the, the chief executive makes these decisions, whether he... And, and, and yet again, he's come out and said, oh, the board will make the decision. If the board are making these big decisions, they don't need a chief executive. Exactly. The chief executive... The chief executive has to make the decision. Now, if he's got to go through, uh, you know, getting the board to rubber stamp his decision, well, you know, because that's what it says he must do in their policies and procedures, then that's fine. However, it's his decision. He should own it. And, uh, and, and, and there's in everything. I mean, I'll just let's, uh, uh, there's one other area that really rankles with me, and that is the Silver Lake deal. They decided that they wouldn't involve the players. So the players said, well, you can bugger off. We're not going to actually agree to this. They went, talked to all the provincial rugby unions, told them what a great deal it was. And then the players said, no, they belatedly then had to get the players involved and the players were responsible for doing a much better deal than he had done. And um, it, it's still not the greatest deal, but anyway, it was a much, much better deal. So then he went round the provincial rugby unions, uh, you know, tail between his legs, I'm guessing, and saying, oh, well, look, here's a better deal. The provincial rugby union said, terrific, but we're not going to agree to it until you give us more money because they learnt that, you know, this guy will flip-flop. I mean, it's just, you know, the way in which he dealt with Australian yeah, rugby. said so yeah. you can only have three teams. Well, how many teams did they end up with? You know, I mean, it just goes on and on. Uh, look, David Moffat is with us on the platform. Okay, so how does this unfold or end from here? Ian Foster has remained defiant. He got on the plane before he flew back to New Zealand saying, I'm the coach I expect to be in charge for the Argentinian tests, yep. and that's Saturday week. Now, we all know that Mark Robinson was there to fire him or to make that announcement, but unfortunately for Mark and New Zealand rugby, that the All Blacks put in a great performance, courageous performance, and they won, and the players are now backing Ian Foster. So if Ian Foster doesn't walk voluntarily, that means Robinson is going to have to sack him. That is a $10 million decision and mistake from New Zealand rugby because all the contracts that are have to be ripped up, paid out. He, there's also a really good employment case here for a PG for Foster to go against. Uh, Mark Robinson, if he if he if he doesn't realise already, so a couple of things. What happens now, um, and and does Ian Foster keep his job, and how does New Zealand rugby cover their butts on this? Because that's the only thing in Mark Robinson's mind. My brilliant career. How do I cover my butt? Right. So he's got two choices. He'll either have to sack him or back him. And when I say back him, he has to back him to the World Cup. 
because if he was to say, which I thought that, which I thought is what he would do, is say, okay, well, I'm going to back him until the end of the rugby championship or till the end of the Northern Hemisphere tour. Then, then what happens then? Yet another review, you know, another no, review. I know. I know. Um, so my so and and, and it's, it, it's New Zealand rugby is currently being run, run like a government department. department. Yeah, it is. You know, we can't make a decision. We don't know what to do. Let's have a review. Um, and so, if he if he if he sacks him, then that then that stops all of this stuff. But if he doesn't, uh, what is he going to say? He's going to say, oh, we'll review it after then. We'll review it after so that poor old uh, Ian Foster is on tenterhooks the whole time when he should be concentrating on, you know, working on, on the back of that big win. So, you know, he's got, he's got two choices, as I said. He can either sack him or he can in- endorse him through until the next World Cup. There's no more middle ground for this guy to go on. David, why, again, I'm just going back to that same point. I'm just thinking here while I'm talking to you. You're standing up, you're saying things because you feel like most of us fans do, that somebody's got to say something. Where are the old coaches? Where is the old CEO? Why don't these people actually make a public comment? There are very few past All Blacks who will actually put their hand up and comment. Why is there such a fraidy cat, I don't want to talk element in New Zealand rugby? Why, where's that come from and why is it still? I think it's all it's it's been the case um for the last couple of decades really where Longer. anybody that spoke up uh, yeah um uh, anybody that spoke up um was um you know ostracized or disenfranchised or whatever it is and you know from being in the media that if uh, if you're in the media have the temerity to be critical of New Zealand rugby you'll get blackballed yep uh and and that 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 is that is wrong and you know, some some have come. I mean, to be fair to Hanson, yeah, he, he has. Yeah, he he came on. Mills Mulaina, yeah, who you wouldn't brilliant. think, yep. would would actually say something. He came out and and talked about the treatment of, of Foster. But there's and so few of them, them, though. I mean, look at I look at that program, the yeah. breakdown, and here's Jeff Wilson, who is Mark Robinson 2.0. He just talks round and round in circles and cliches. So John Curran will at least have a crack. But I'd expect a hell of a lot more from this because the treatment of the man has actually been inhumane. And and also, who else has a job, David, in such a high-profile job where every single week your performance is scrutinised not only by the country but by your boss as to whether or not you're going to keep your job? Nobody can work under those circumstances. No, and and I and I've said on more than one occasion that um, if I was Scott Robinson. Robertson, I, I would actually um, have real second thoughts about wanting to work for Mark Robinson, you know, given given his performance to date. Uh, you know, why, why would you want to put yourself under that sort of um, microscope and pressure where, you know, based on what Twitter's saying, uh, then, you know, the decisions will be different. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's, um, it's very, very difficult for everybody. And and I, and I mean, I thought Foster made a very very telling point yesterday when he was about to get on the plane, and and he was asked whether he he would felt that uh, Robinson backed him, and and he said, I have the backing of the All Blacks, you know, he sidestepped that question, and um and I thought that was very telling, to be perfectly honest with you. All right, then. So what's going to unfold? Uh, There is going to be a board meeting, and obviously Robinson's going to try and hide behind that no matter what it says. So is Ian Foster going to be endorsed at the end of the week, do you think, to to, to continue and coach us against Argentina, or is he gone? Yeah, look, I I think that um, it's so difficult because um, when, when it comes to making decisions, this New Zealand rugby um, you know they're all over the place like a dog's breakfast. But I would expect them to back Foster um, and back him through until the World Cup uh, because the All Blacks are backing him. I don't feel I wouldn't put my house on what I'd recommend, what I thought will happen. But there you go. You've got to have a bit of a stab in the dark, don't you? 